ESPN Illustration 646 AM Edit Jump to the individual positions, click here, left field, center field, right field as our tier rating series begins to wind down, we come to the outfielders. That means, of course, it's Mike Trout Day. Trout's status as best player in the game has been touted for so long now that it's almost a cliché. It's also a hard notion to challenge. Even in evidence-based estimates like these, his edge is just too large to allow room for a good debate. The Boston Red Sox's Mookie Betts is probably better positioned to challenge Trout's reign than any other player. But my forecasts have Trout with a 1.5 HWAR edge over Betts, which is to say that he's 1.5 HWAR ahead of every other player in the majors. How do the best at each position rank and what tier of production do they fit in? Positions, C, 1B, 2B, SS, 3B, of February 19th, SP, February 20th, RP, Feb. 21, Betts, had a better season than Trout last year. He had a better season than anyone in the majors, a declaration that few Red Sox fans would challenge and probably not many New York Yankees fans would either. However, that's a separate thing from claiming that Betts has usurped Trout status as the game's best player. That sort of changeover doesn't happen overnight. I decided to get at this topic by looking at how long best in the game players have generally held the title, and how Trout stacks up historically. He first began to be touted as the game's best way back in 2012, his first whole season in the majors. That wasn't a consensus feeling right off the bat, but it wasn't long before that idea spread from coast to coast. Many of those who defended Miguel Cabrera's selection as the 2012 American League MVP, just because he happened to become baseball's first Triple Crown winner in 45 years, really didn't argue that Cabrera was better than Trout, just that he had a better year. The same dynamic was in play in 2013, when Cabrera again outpointed Trout for MVP. By that point, however, the idea that Trout was the best player in baseball was firmly embedded and it hasn't really been challenged since. That means even if we don't annoy Trout for his rookie season, we're still looking at a six-year window, 2013 through last season, when he has been baseball's consensus best player. That seems like a long time. To see how that compares historically, I dumped every season single season win shares measurement from the baseballgauge.com into a file and calculated 5-year averages. Note, these numbers vary slightly from the official win shares figures as compiled at Bill James Online. In other words, for each season, a player is measured by his win shares for the two preceding years, the current year, and the two years after. Rolling averages is the statistical term, this gives us a glimpse of who the actual best in-game players were at a given time, regardless of what challengers might have bobbed up with a career season, while also giving us enough window to mute the effect of fluke injury seasons. Downside with this size of a rolling window is that we can't get a good measurement until a player's third season. Also, we don't have the year after and two years after measurements for the last two seasons of a player's career, nor for players from 2017 and 2018. Future seasons haven't happened yet, so we just count the seasons that we have. It might seem odd to consider two seasons that haven't happened when assessing the best player in a given year, but what we're after is a good estimate of true talent level. Hindsight helps sharpen that estimate. Here is the progression of best player in the game, estimates for the modern era, based on these 5-year win share estimates. Players are rated statistically according to anticipated 2019 value, playing time and primary position. The core metric being used is HWAR, which stands for harmonic wins above replacement. The ratings are based on a cross-section of projections, including my system, MLBPET, the steamer projections from Fangraphs.com. Picota from BaseballProspectus.com and the Davenport projections from ClayDavenport.com, using forecasts for runs created, fielding runs, pitching runs allowed, a consensus version of projected wins above replacement was calculated for each player. 
This consensus war is referred to as HWAR in the rankings. Data from fangraphs for defensive runs saved and ultimate zone rating were incorporated into the fielding component for each position player. Win probability added data from fangraphs was incorporated into the ratings, primarily to better capture the value of top relief pitchers, for players likely to spend the majority of their time this season at designated hitter, their primary position was considered to be where they've spent the most time on the field in recent years. The Angels Shohei Otani was included with the right fielders, as that is the position, other than pitcher, at which he appeared most often in Japan. Each player's tier status was determined by his overall MLB rank, not the rank within his base position. The idea was to give a snapshot of where the production is coming from in baseball right now. How many Tier 1 first basemen are there right now? What about Tier 2 relief pitchers? This kind of grouping gives us a sense of how players are being evaluated and deployed, and an idea what the talent pool looks like at present. The tiers are defined as follows. Tier definitions, I. Franchise guys, players ranking 1 to 15, 2. All-stars, players ranking 16 to 60, 3. First Division Regulars, Players Ranking 61 to 135, IV. Second Division Regulars, Players Ranking 136 to 270, V. Role Players, Players Ranking 271 to 750, V. Extras, Everyone Else. Best in Baseball, Rain Cy Young, 3 years, 1899 to 1901, Honus Wagner, 7 years, 1902 to 1908, Ty Cobb, 3 years, 1909 to 1911, Walter Johnson, 2 years, 1912-1913, Trust Speaker, 1 year, 1914, Ty Cobb, 6 years, 1912 to 1917, Babe Ruth, 13 years, 1918 to 1930, Lou Gehrig, 5 years, 1931 to 1935, Melot, 2 years, 1936-19, 37, Joe DiMaggio, 3 years, 1938-1940, Ted Williams, 2 years, 1941-1942, Stan Musial, 2 years, 1943-1944, Al Newhauser, 1 year, 1945, Ted Williams, 5 years, 1944-1948, Stan Musial, 7 years, 1947-1953, Mickey Mantle, 7 years, 1954-1960, Willie Mays, 6 years, 1961-1966, Hank Aaron, 1 year, 1967, Carly Ostremski, 2 years, 1968-1969, Pete Rose, 2 years, 1970-1971, Joe Morgan, 5 years, 1972-1976, Mike Schmidt, 8 years, 1977-1984, Tim Raines, 1 year, 1985, Wade Boggs, 3 years, 1986-1988, Will Clark, 1 year, 1989, Barry Bonds, 14 years, 1990-2003, Albert Pujols, 7 years, 2004 to 2010, Miguel Cabrera, 1 year, 2011, Robinson Cano, 1 year, 2012, Andrew McCutcheon, 1 year, 2013, Mike Trout, 5 years, 2014 to 2018. Based on this method, there was a highly unusual power vacuum between the beginning of Pujols' decline phase and the arrival of Trout as a superstar, though the method might be wrong to not declare Trout the best player by 2013. Still, you get a sense of the place in baseball history that Trout has already established. This is a bit of regurgitation from the list above, but here are the only players to own a five-year reign as the game's best player. Honus Wagner, Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Ted Williams, Stan Musial, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Joe Morgan, Mike Schmidt, Barry Bonds, Albert Pujols, Mike Trout. This is as Hall of Famey as the list can get. In case you somehow missed this fact, let's state this emphatically, every time we get to watch Mike Trout play baseball, we are watching an all-time great. Incredibly, he's still only 27 years old. Perhaps the Angels might want to externalize some of those internal discussions. Subscribe to ESPN to get access to all premium articles, fantasy tools, plus thousands of live sporting events, and ESPN originals for just $4.99 per mo. To help make this website better, to improve and personalize your experience and for advertising purposes, are you happy to accept cookies and other technologies? More info here cookie choices.